Hello guys, welcome back and in this topic we are going to talk a very important topic that is Candida. So Candida is similar to the yeast or we have studied it under the category that is yeast like. If you remember from the introduction and classification part we have studied a lot about Candida and let's recall all the points and some extra points of the Candida. So, so now what we have studied so far is Candida is yeast like. Yeast like means it is going to show budding. Also it is going to show pseudo hyphae. So this is something that we have already studied. It shows budding and pseudo hyphae because it is yeast like a fungus. What are the types, various type of candida? We have candida albicans. That is the most common infection that causes oral thrush, that causes uh, vaginitis. So basically, these are, this is the most common candida that is going to seen in the human affecting the fungal causes, the fungal diseases like, for example, oral thrush, ocular candidiasis, vulvovaginitis. So all these things are seen with the candida albicans most commonly. The next one is doubly leniensis. So doubly, len doubly leniensis is the one that is double, copy double. So it is going to uh, mimic the candida albicans, but there are some differentiating features that we'll talk in this lecture. Then we have candida glabrata. Glebrata only shows budding and there is no pseudo hyphae in glebrata. And two important points related to Candida auris and Candida cruz is that both of these are resistant to azoles. We know that we give azoles for a fungal infection, but both of these auris and cruz, both of these are resistant to azole. So there is no use giving azole to Candida auris and Candida cruz. Then we have Candida kefir. This is used as control and susceptibility test. So when we do a sensitivity testing, in the sensitivity testing, we need to see that if for a particular drug, we can we give this particular drug to this particular organism for that we see resistance if the bacteria or if the virus or if the fungal is resistant to this particular drug or not for that we do a sensitivity testing basically we do a lot for the antibiotic sensitivity that is done for the bacteria similarly for fungal also we do the see i told you resistant to azoles that means we have done the sensitivity testing and then in this sensitivity testing what we find out is that candida auris and candida cruz both of these are resistant to azoles that means azole is not working for them so like that we do the sensitivity testing for bacteria fungus and all these things so basically in that we have a control group and control group in the susceptibility test is this candida kefir now the candida normal flora is present as the candida in gi system in the genital tract in the mucosa in skin in nails in internal organs but in case of hiv patient we have already discussed that candida most commonly affects the HIV individuals or in immunocompromised patients wherein the normal immunity is decreased. So the normal flora is going to cause infection in GI, in genital tract, in mucosa, skin, nails, internal organ. Candida is present as the normal flora. But when the immunity is suppressed in case of immunocompromised patient or in case of HIV, in that scenario, this is going to, candida is going to cause infection. So in case of HIV and immunocompromised, this normal flora is going to cause infection. And what kind of infection is caused by this candida? Most commonly candida albicans that we have discovered, mucocutaneous, guys, mucocutaneous is curdy white discharge. So if you see the discharge, in case of oral uh, cavity, you will find the oral thrush. That means you can see on the buccal mucosa, on the tongue, basically this white, white color patches that are present and that is known as oral thrush. So in the mouth, it is oral thrush. And if you try to scrape it, it can be scraped. And this is how we differentiate the oral thrush, that is oral candidiasis from leukoplakia. So in the oral pathology and medicine, we will be studying this and we have covered this also that how do we differentiate the oral candidiasis? Both of these looks milk curdy white, curdy white, milky white or curdy white. So white color, thick, thick uh, patches are seen in both in oral candidiasis also and leukoplakia also. But if you try to scrape it in leukoplakia, it will not be scraped, but in candidiasis, it will be scraped. So basically a curdy white discharge, curdy white patches are seen in, in, in the mouth that is the oral thrush that is caused by candida albicin most commonly but caused by candida. In the esophagus it causes esophagitis, in the vagina it causes vulvovaginitis, in the penis in the males it causes balanitis and in the eye it causes ocular candidiasis. When this candida, see basically it is a fungal infection and we know that we get a fungal infection in nails, in the skin. So basically in, in the nails it is known as peronacea and also it can cause 
or nycomycosis. In the urinary tract infection, it is going to cause UTI. In the urinary tract and in the heart, it can cause endocarditis. In the brain, it can cause meningitis. In the lungs, when it is involved, there is pulmonary involvement. And in the kids, we know it causes diaper rash. So you must have seen the diaper rash that is associated with candidiasis. So candidiasis, candida causes vulvovaginitis in the females and there is a curdivide discharge you can see at the pap smear that is seen at the cervix. So this is like a curdy white color. Also, we have something known as sheesh kebab effect in case of candidiasis. If you see Mike in the microscope, what you find is there is a stick that is pseudohyphae. See, we know that pseudohyphae are like stick. See, this is the bud form and pseudohyphae are like the stick. So, this is the stick of pseudohyphae and on this stick, we have the epithelial cells like this. These are the epithelial cells on this stick. So, pseudohyphae is the stick and epithelial cells are the of the cervix are the kebabs and that is why we call sheesh kebab effect so if you see on a microscope you can see here there is an imaginary stick and on this stick these are the epithelial cells of the cervix and these are the kebabs and the stick is the pseudohyphae so this is sheesh kebab effect that means kebab you, you, if you have seen the stick on the kebab so that is sheesh kebab effect stick on which you put the Kappa, this is pseudohyphae and we know that pseudohyphae is long and epithelial cells are the cells. So, they are the cells, uh, epithelial cells of the cervix. They are like kebab. So, this is the shish kebab effect. What are the predisposing factor to candidiasis? See, I told you, candida is present as a normal flora. But in some times, in some cases, when the immunity is low or in case of HIV individual, then in that case, the normal flora causes the infection. So, all the situations or scenario in which patient's immunity is low, then it causes infection. For example, old age immunity is decreased. Diabetes mellitus, decreased immunity. Again, steroid causes decrease in the immunity. Pregnancy is a physiological state in which the immunity is decreased so that body is not fighting against the fetus. And in HIV, we know it is an immuno immunosuppressive state or immunocompromised state. In case of immunosuppressive patient is taking, then also it can cause candidiasis and immunodeficiency disease or immunocompromised state, for example, HIV. When there is low neutrophil count, in that case, body cannot fight against infection. And again, that comes under a low immunity state. Or in case of infancy, it causes diaper rash as well. So, how do you diagnose this candida albicans? We know that it has both buds and pseudohyphae because it is yeast-like organism. When it is yeast-like organism in a microscope, what you find, these are the buds, guys. And you can easily appreciate long one pseudohyphae. See, how we have drawn the buds is like this. Buds are like this small one. And the pseudohyphae are the long one. Right? So, these long one are the pseudohyphae and you can see the buds. So, this is how you can see that this is a yeast-like organism. Culture we do using the SDA agar and on the SDA agar you can find this creamy, pasty, yeasty colonies. Creamy, pasty, yeasty colonies. So if you appreciate this creamy, pasty, yeasty colonies, creamy means it is cream like, you can see it is cream like, it is like a paste form. So it is pasty and then yeasty means the order of these colonies like a yeast. If you have gone to any bakery, it has got because of the yeast that is used for fermentation of the bakery or all the bread. So the order of the bakery is yeasty because of the yeast that we use. So bakery smell comes from the culture media from the colony when you grow the candida. Now, if you can recall from introduction and classification chapter, we have covered that three C's for candida. One C is corn meal agar, another one is candida and it is a chlamydospore and another C is chrome agar. If you can recall, so on the corn meal agar, it is going to show chlamydospores. Chlamydospores is nothing, just the double wall configuration. Again, from this chapter, if you remember, the diagram of the chlamydospores is like double wall. It is like this double wall. So, it shows on the corn meal agar a double wall configuration. This is shown by the candida albicans. So, corn meal agar three C's. Corn meal agar one C shows candida and it is a chlamydospore. It comes under the chlamydospore. Another C is chrome agar. If you remember again the chrome agar, it shows different different color for different different species of the candida. For example, different color for candida albicans, for glabrata, for goose, for famata, for tropicalis or for oris. 
Another test that is done for candida is the germ tube test and it is also known as Reynolds broad phenomena. So in that what we do, we take the candida and we add the human serum and we incubate this and once you incubate this, you can find these big tube-like structures. What are the big tube-like structures? These are nothing, just pseudo hyphae. Remember, candida is yeast-like and yeast-like shows two things. One is budding. Another one is pseudo hyphae. So pseudo hyphae is nothing, just a big tube like structure that is coming out. And this is known as germ tube. You can see a tube is coming out of this. And this is known as the germ tube, which is also known as a renal broad phenomenon. So as I told you, Candida albicin and Dubliniensis, both of these, Dubliniensis is the copy double of Candida albicin. And candida albicin is the most common that causes infection. So let's talk about the differentiating feature between candida albicin and Dublinins. So Dublinins, everything is similar, but the candida albicans is just tough and it survives everything. For example, candida growth is seen above 45 degrees Celsius, while on the other hand, Dublinins does not show growth above 45. And candida also shows growth in hypertonic. So it is basically tough and it survives everything. So growth in hypertonic is shown by candida albicans, while Dublinins does not show. But the similar features between Dublinins and candida albicans is germ tube test is shown in both in that pseudo hyphae seen and chlamydospores are seen in both. Now coming to the treatment part, we know that the antifungal that we give for oral thrush or vulvovaginitis is nystatin and we use it topically. So we give a cream form, topical cream form for uh, of nystatin for oral thrush and vulvovaginitis and for severe if there is systemic involvement then we give the azole that is fluconazole or nystatin. Now if you remember azoles are most commonly given but not given for two species. Not given for two. One is Candida auris and another one is Cruz. Cruz. So two Candida auris and Cruz, uh, they are resistant to uh, azoles and that's why we do not give. Or you can give Nystatin and for deep or organ involvement, you can give liposomal Amphotericin B. So guys, this is about Candida. All the best.